Hey guys, it's Michael here and today I'm going to do a video on a complete oil change on my Z900 RS. I uh, bought this bike about a month, a little bit less than a month ago, uh, and I just hit the 600 mile mark, so I'm going to do the full oil change on the bike. Kawasaki recommends doing it at 600 due to the break-in period. Uh, I bought all of four quarts of oil, which you need. The bike takes exactly four quarts of oil um, with the filter change so i just got kawasaki 4w or 10w40 uh, just four stroke motorcycle oil which is what kawasaki recommends uh, i am going to eventually switch over to full synthetic but they say to run uh, just normal conventional oil for the first 2,000 miles roughly so i'm going to do the oil change i got a kawasaki oem filter uh, as well uh, I want to stick with OEM filters because just in case I ever do have an issue with the bike down the road, um, if it's still in a warranty, at least I'm using all OEM components. So I'd recommend doing the same. Uh, I want to say I paid about seven bucks for the oil filter, so it wasn't too expensive. Um, and let me show you the exact amount of miles I have on the bike. The bike is completely cold. Uh, I got 602 miles on the odometer, so we're pretty much right at that perfect uh, point. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start up the bike, let it run for about 30 seconds or so. I want to get the oil warmed up a little bit so it drains out easier. So let me go ahead and do that. We'll just turn her on. And you guys will get the sound of this beautiful exhaust. So I let it run for about 20, 30 seconds. I don't want it to get too hot, because then if it gets too hot, then I'm, I'm gonna burn my hands touching on some things. So um, let me go ahead and get my oil uh, drain pan. And we'll right, just so you know, the drain bolt that you're going to remove is a 17 millimeter uh, socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the drain bolt and we'll uh, go from there. All right, so I got the drain bolt broken loose. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so we will see how she looks. And I did get a new cross washer as well, and there we go. That was a lot messier than it should have been. So hopefully, I'm not seeing all that much. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to see there, but there we go. So yeah, I'm going to let this drain out, and it looks like the old crush washer kind of got stuck on there. So I'm going to remove that um, once it's kind of done draining. As you can see, it's still on there. So make sure yours does not uh, get stuck on there because if you put two crush, washer, two crush washers on, it's most likely going to leak. You know, a little bit of uh, metal flake. It's still draining, um, but it doesn't look like anything crazy, so that's good. Once it's done draining, I'm going to start removing the oil filter, uh, which is right here. Let me see if actually I can crack that loose sometimes these things are pretty tight on there so uh, if you have like an oil filter wrench it's probably make it a lot easier I'm gonna try and get this off by hand all right guys so I got the oil filter kind of off it's draining right now one thing I will say is it is extremely tight I don't know if this is just my bike but from the factory um, this is directly how it came from Kawasaki uh, I could barely even get the oil filter I couldn't get it off with my hands so I had to use my channel locks, and the channel locks kind of damaged the filter right here, but that's fine. I have a new filter, um, so you might, if I'll probably eventually just buy a uh, oil filter toolkit because I do the oil changes on all my vehicles. So I probably will just invest in one of those because it'd probably be a whole lot easier. So there we go. So as you can see, that is all off there. I'm going to let this drain for a few minutes, and then uh, we'll be back. So while I'm letting that drain, I do want to show you guys just what the manual says here. Um, so it just kind of shows you where your uh, there is a sight glass on the side of the bike where you can check your level, which we will do once we uh, fill it up and all that. <clears throat> and you have all your, you know, it shows you where the drain bolt is, gasket, and that shows you... Uh, you know here now the one thing I do want to note is I see now it says a torque wrench or required Kawasaki special tool is 
uh, is not available. This item should be serviced by an authorized Kawasaki dealer. So I would guess that's probably why it's so tight on there. They don't want you doing it yourself, but I'm not going to pay someone uh, $100 to change the oil on my bike when I can get everything for basically uh, 35 bucks. So, um, and it says obviously when you put this filter back on, which we'll go over when I install this. And then these, again, from what I was told from the dealership, pretty much all Kawasaki bikes use 10W40 uh, in most climates. So, uh, right there it says 3.8, which is 4.0 or 4.0 US quartz when the filter's removed, which we're doing. And it specifies right here uh, is the recommended. If you are in a colder climate, obviously you probably can go lighter. And if you're in an extremely hot climate, you can probably go a little bit heavier. But I think 1040 is probably going to be the best for my application. Uh, and that's what I'm going to stick with since that's what Kawasaki is recommending. So all of this stuff here, now keep in mind, um, I paid $50 for all of this. I bought five quarts of oil. But this quart and this filter is for my Z125. Uh, these four quarts and this are for the Z900. So just basically buying this stuff here, which is like I said, Kawasaki 1040, the crush washer, which we're gonna replace, and then the OEM Kawasaki filter. All right, so here's the old filter. Uh, one thing I do wanna note, I, I doubt it would happen, but when you do take this filter off, make sure that black O-ring uh, gasket does come off with it. Sometimes if these do stick to the bike and then you apply another filter with these gasket on top, it's going to leak. So just make sure that black O-ring comes off. So it's still kind of dripping. So I'm going to wait till that's done and uh, we'll get back to putting everything back in. All right, guys. So one thing I do like to do is just wipe down the whole area uh, where we're going to be reapplying, <clears throat> reapplying that new filter just to make sure there's no dirt or gunk or anything stuck up in here. It also just ensures that, um, you know, you have a clean uh, area where you're gonna be installing everything. So, I'm just gonna wipe this all down, get it all nice and clean in there. Um, I figure if you take the extra minute to do this, if it helps, it's fantastic. So, I'm just gonna wipe that all down. I'm gonna get another paper towel <clears throat> and just do it again. And then this stuff is still kind of dripping, so I just want to make sure all of it comes out. So I'm just going to wipe that down there, and you can see it's still kind of dripping out. So I'm just going to let this go for another minute or two. All right, so I'm going to lubricate this uh, O-ring up here. So all we're going to do is take a small kind of just kind of lubricate this. Uh, what this does is when you're reinstalling the filter, uh, it'll allow the o-ring to slip on there or the gasket to slip on there instead of kind of binding up so just make sure you uh get a nice coat all the way around which we did i'm doing this one-handed so that's why this is uh kind of a mess right now but yeah so we got that on i'm going to install the filter now so let's get to that that gasket all right so we're going to want to install this you're going to want to make sure it catches those threads just make sure you don't cross thread it it should spin very easily like that, as you can see. So, I'm just gonna put that on, tighten it down, uh, give it a couple cranks. I'm not gonna tighten it anywhere near as tight as what it was on the OEM filter because I wanna be able to get this damn thing off again. So I'm gonna go right there. So that should be completely fine, hand tight. Um, I mean, you can go a little bit tighter, but honestly, that gasket has a job, and that is to seal that, so you really don't need to over-tighten these things like a lot of people think. Uh, and if for some reason you start the bike and it is dribbling a little bit, then, you know, just torque down a little bit more, but uh, it should be completely fine like that. So I'm just gonna wipe everything down. I'm gonna get the new crush washer, and we're gonna install that drain plug back, and then we'll start filling. Right, so here's the drain bolt. That is the OEM one that came with the bike. Here's a new crush washer. So I did take the crush washer off the old one, it fell into the drain pan. So I'm just gonna wipe these down, make sure they're uh, nice and clean. Put that on and let's put her in the bike. So I'm gonna get down here and uh, you can see it's still dripping out a little bit, but it honestly would probably drip out for 30, 40 minutes if I let it. So, 
and I'm doing this one-handed, so it's not really that easy. <laughs> so there we go. Drain bolts in. I'm gonna tor I'm just tighten that down a little bit, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So next step is we're gonna come over here. As you can see, there's the old crush washer. I'm just gonna put that there for now. Oil fill cap is right here, and then your sight glass is right here. So you're not gonna be able to see any oil in the bike when it's on its side like this on the side stand. So you will have to stand it up, I'll have to run it, make sure everything's uh, level and all that. So I'm gonna take this off and see, we got a dry crankcase. So I'm gonna come over here, just set that down like that. Don't forget your O-ring and uh, we'll start filling it right, up. So we're gonna start filling it up. Uh, I don't have a, this is a very small opening on here. Um, so I don't have a small enough funnel that actually fits in there. So I'm gonna have to hold it up while I pour. And we're gonna do four of these bottles. So when we get back to the last bottle, I'll get back with you. All right guys, so this is the last bottle of the 1040. Um, just, these are going in pretty easy. So I'm just gonna fill this up. Uh, once we're done putting all the bottles in, I'm just gonna check the sight glass just to confirm there is oil in there. And uh, once I do that, I'm gonna start the bike up, let it run for a little bit, and uh, just check the oil filter and make sure we're all good to go. All right guys, so I have confirmed we have oil in the side glass. I'm tipping the bike up a little bit. So I'm gonna just set her down and let's start her up and uh, let it run for a few minutes. And then we're gonna check the oil level again, make sure it's sitting right, which it should be considering we put exactly four quarts in. Check engine lights, which we don't. No oil pressure lights. but we are now down to idle temp. It's sitting at around 1100 RPM for idle. So I'm gonna let it idle for uh, about three, four minutes. I wanna just make sure it gets all, it warms up completely uh, or as close as possible without riding it. And then once I do that, I'm going to check the oil level, just make sure we're good between those two lines. Uh, the two lines you wanna make sure is between, uh, you wanna make sure that you're between this top or the bottom and top line. As you can see, the bike's on the side, so you can't see any oil in the crankcase right now, but um, once we put it straight up, it will be. You can also see those beautiful approximate cheddars. That's warm. Uh, let's see what our oil level's sitting at. I'm just gonna pull the bike pretty straight up. And yeah, so we're perfect. We are uh, basically straight, and our oil level is just right under the half mark, or just right under that top mark. So that's uh, a perfect uh, level we want to be at. Um, eventually, I need to get a I need to get a stand for this thing, make it a lot easier. But yeah, so that's going to pretty much wrap up the video of the oil changing procedure, how you should do it based off Kawasaki guidelines. Um, it definitely would help if you had an oil filter wrench. That's one thing I will say I will invest in. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Drain the oil, take the oil filter off, uh, let it drip out for clean, you know, clean some of the small little components up or some of the, like the, the threads and all that where you're screwing everything into, uh, fill it up, you know, make sure you have, uh, oil, you know, displaying on the, uh, the side glass before you start it. Let it run for a few, five minutes or so, let it warm up, let it get to you know operating temperature, and then check your uh, fluids again. And if you're sitting between those lines, you're pretty much good to go. This is straightforward. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave it down in the comment box. I hope this helps some out. Uh, if you guys have any requests for any other videos on the Z900 RS, let me know because uh, I do have a lot of plans for this thing. Thanks for watching.